Hello everyone, it's Lakeisha and today I'm going to show you how to create my original page dream. We're going to jump right in and add some acrylic paint to the background to add some color. Now I'm going to use a little bit of glazing medium and acrylic paint to um, sort of add some more color. I didn't really like the brown that I put down at first, um, so I'm going over it with something brighter. You'll occasionally see me go in and use my brayer to add some texture um, and then paint over it, partially because I wasn't sure what direction I was going in when I started this page, but also because um, I'm still trying to get the color right. At this point, I felt like I was at a good place with my page, so I decided to add some more pattern to the background. I'm using an ink pad and um, an applicator to rub some color into the page. Just moved the stencil around and repeated the process a few times to cover the entire page. Once I was done adding the pattern, I used my heat tool to dry the page. Then I decided that I really didn't like the background still, so I went back in with a little bit more color. Here, I switched from my brayer to using a paper towel to give the paint some additional texture and to pull off a little bit of the color. Now I'm ready to start drawing uh, my face. <laughs> Not my face, but the lady on my page. I'm using a white um, pencil, I think it's charcoal, to lightly sketch the figure.
I realized that the uh, white charcoal was a little difficult to see, so I switched to a pencil. Um, this also helps me better define the features of the face and the lines that I actually want to use. When I was satisfied with my line drawing, I switched to my Faber-Castell um, Pit Artist Pen. And I love this pen because it uses Indian ink, um, which is archival and um, smudge proof. So I can paint over it or do whatever and um, my lines will still be there. Now I'm ready to start painting. So I am putting out little dots of glazing medium and retarder um, so that I can get pretty thin transparency on my paint um, as well as a little bit more working time so that it doesn't dry before um, I'm ready for it too. So I'm just putting in a flat layer of color on my base so that I can have something to build on top of moving forward. Now I'm going to start putting in some of the shadows and dark areas by using a little bit more tan. Since I used um, the retarder, I'm able to go in and blend together the um, base layer with this new layer of tan.
to add a little bit more warmth to the skin tone, I used a yellow ochre. I thinned out the uh, color a little bit by adding some more glazing medium and retarder so that I could um, go in and still have some of that base color um, be apparent. Now I'm going back into the shadows again. This is a fairly repetitive process in that um, I'm continually building up the layers and working to get the colors just right. Now I'm adding the first set of highlights and as I said, this is a repetitive process. You'll see me do this several more times before uh, this page is complete. Now it's time for the first layer of color on the hair. Since I had um, a few layers of paint down, I wanted to go back in and touch up my lines so that um, I still had the uh, look of the image that I had drawn in. I didn't want to lose it under too many layers of paint. Now I'm using a bit of magenta and glazing medium to add color to her lips as well as her cheeks. One of my favorite things about glazing medium is that it gives you the opportunity to really create the colors that you want and um, add depth to your work. going back into the highlights, um, doing a little bit more 
to uh, define the shapes of the face, like the nose and um, cheekbones and, and places where the light generally hits. Using the same color that I set aside for the hair, I am going back in and adding more detail to the shadows of the face. Every now and then I'll switch to using my finger to blend um, the paint together. I just find that uh, it's a little bit more intuitive than using the paintbrush and I can get um, the paint to be as smooth and, and well blended as I want it to be. I'm using a bit of teal and uh, yellow ochre to add some highlights to the hair. Just something to make it a little different. While I was painting, I ran a few shapes through my Silhouette Cameo and now I'm ready to go ahead and take them off the uh, mat. I cut out um, a few butterflies, the word Dream, a rose shape, as well as um, a decorative shape that I've used for necklaces and things of that nature in my past work. My cameo is definitely one of those things that, you know, I'm so glad that I purchased. Um, I use it to cut out everything and I can't imagine my life without it. <laughs> I played around with the placement of those butterflies for way too long and I had to edit it out but um, eventually I settled on a placement uh, that worked for me. Now 
I am shortening um, the, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, the ribbon on the dream phrase uh, and using some liquid gilding to add a little bit of gold to it. Uh, my distressed ink to add a little bit of aging to um, my dream banner. I wanted it to look really worn and um, almost rusted in a way. Oxidized is actually the better word. So now I'm adding um, a little bit of teal over the gilding so that I can get that metallic oxidized feel and of course using my brayer for texture struggled with the placement of the items on this page and as you can see I tried a little bit of everything before I settled on um, my final layout. I really liked the look that I was able to achieve with the dream banner. So I wanted to do something similar with the butterflies. The only problem was that I had to use a color that um, contrasted enough with the background for the butterflies to stand out. I applied the orange paint a little sporadically so that I can go back in with the black paint and um, sort of uh, highlight, I guess, the orange areas. brush that I applied the black paint with was very wet so I had to go back in and use a paper towel and sort of dab up the extra and then use my heat tool to dry the butterflies. Um, that's an embossing tool that I'm using to hold them in place. I actually went as far as to mark where the butterflies were so that I didn't have to go through the struggle of um, figuring out where I wanted them again. I added a little bit of distressed ink to the edges just to amplify the contrast between the butterflies and the background. And of course I wasn't finished with the face. <laughs> so I'm adding uh, the same orange that I used on the butterfly to the lips and cheeks to sort of um, bring that color in again. I also added it to the shoulders and collarbone just for effect. I 
again with the shadows. I was very picky. <laughs> um, all in all, I think it took me about three hours to paint this page and that was way too long. But you know, I got the results that I wanted. Now I'm ready to start gluing down my pieces. I used a combination of matte medium and fluid matte medium to do this. Um, I switched between the two because the matte medium is a thicker consistency and is better at holding things down than the uh, fluid matte medium. Um, in the future I'm going to switch to soft gel because that's even thicker and um, I've heard that more people use that for collage um, than matte or fluid medium. For a few finishing touches, I went back to my Faber-Castell um, artist pens to add some shadowing to my dream banner as well as um, beneath the butterflies and the lettering just to sort of um, make those things stand up off the skin and the background a little bit. I also went back in over my lines one more time to uh, make sure that they were better defined look the way that I want them to. And there you have it. Thank you for watching.